Hey guys, I wanted to start a new sort of video series on my YouTube channel today. Um, since there's not a lot of content to push out, there's not a lot of movies being released, you can't go to the movie theater, and a lot of our content revolves around mine and Josh's movie reviews. So I thought it would be a cool time to sort of dive into some, some things that I think are sort of overlooked. Not necessarily underrated, but overlooked things that maybe didn't get the recognition that they deserve and that can come in the form of albums, movies, or even television series. And today I wanted to talk about uh, one of my favorite albums of all time from one of my favorite rock bands of all time and that's Skylarking by XTC. And the reason why I chose this album is that I think that it's not personally the album that I would probably listen to the first at first by them. That would probably go to English, uh, English Settlement um, and even Oranges and, and and Lemons has, I think, a couple of their best songs ever written. But I think Skylarking, for its 15 tracks, if you're looking at the revised issue of the album, it is their most consistent work to date. It is the album that I would recommend people listen to first by XTC. If they want to think about getting into XTC, Skylarking is probably the album that they should listen to. Um, a song from this album it was the first song that I ever heard from XTC, and it was in the movie It that came out a few years ago. That song is Dear God, and I like that song. And then they come to find out they don't have any other song that sounds like that song on, on any of their albums. And and that's one of the things that I admire the most about XTC. Um, this album is uh, it, it's, it's multi-genre. It doesn't stick to one formula. Uh, from song to song, it sometimes sounds like a completely different band. Uh, the first half of the album is very pop-centric, and the second half of the album is way more experimental. They dive into some some weird song structure elements, especially in a song like uh, The Man Who Sailed Around around uh, His Soul is uh, almost like a club jazz-oriented song. And uh, This album was produced by uh, legendary songwriter Tom, Todd Rundgren, um, and there was a lot of obstacles to go through uh, between him and uh, the lead songwriter for XTC, which is Andy Partridge, who's also the guitarist and lead singer. He shares vocals with uh, the bass player Colin Moulding, but Andy usually sings most of the songs. And apparently Todd and Andy like went head-to-head, -head. and I think that made for a really, really great album. I think production-wise, this album is essentially flawless, especially if you're looking at right off the get-go, uh, the transition between the first song on the album, Summer's Cauldron, to the second song on the album, Grass, is just a, a seamless transition. And th that happens a few times. I think that this is a, loosely a concept album. Um, it's not a story that I'm necessarily following, but I just enjoy listening to all the songs. It's a, it's a very easy listen. Even at 15 songs, it's, it, it's very easy to get through. Um, and initially, the biggest hit on the album, Dear God, wasn't even on the album. It was uh, it was released on a single for one of their uh, for one of their singles that they released, and this was one of the things that Todd and Andy like went head to head about because Todd Rundgren said that this would be the hit on the album, and Andy thought that it was maybe too polarizing because of its uh, sort of anti-religious themes, and they ended up releasing it, and it was probably their biggest song to date. So it gets to show it goes to show sometimes the songwriter is so in their their own ways in their head that they can't they can't see certain certain things for what they are. And this was one of those cases. It was just uh, a song that was destined to be great and it was the first song I've ever heard by them, so I'm thankful that it was released and became a relatively big single. Um, th there was another song that wasn't initially on the the album uh, whenever it came out and that was Mermaid Smiled which I think is a very interesting song. It was one of those later half of the album songs that sort of delves into the more experimental side of XTC. And uh, if you listen to this album on Spotify, I think that the the running order is completely screwed up because from from what I know the album as, it it has the man who sailed soul the man who sailed around his soul, dear god, dying in sacrificial bonfire. And if you go to the album on Spotify, it has Dear God at the very end of the album, like the last song. And I, I don't like that. The last song on the album should be Sacrificial Bonfire. So if you can get a hold of, of the way that this album is supposed to be listened to, I recommend that instead of Spotify. But if all you have is Spotify, the songs are still there. If we're talking about worst and best songs on the album, like I said, this is essentially a flawless album. But if I had to pick the weakest song on the album, it's going to have to be Big Day. It's the one song on the album that if it pops up on my shuffle, I'll probably skip it. 
but listening to it through the order of the album, I'll, li- I'll listen to it because it really flows really well with the album. I think the best song on the album is a very tough decision because, like I said, this is a pop art, pop art rock masterpiece. But uh, I think that probably the best song on the album is either Summer's Cauldron or 1000 Umbrellas. Yet again, an amazing transition between Ballet for a Rainy Day and 1000 Umbrellas. It's like, it's 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 masterwork is what it is. Uh, so yeah, this album, I think, is often referred to as XTC's strongest album today. If you look at best albums of the 80s, this is always probably going to be in the top 50 or so. So th- that's why I'm choosing this album. Even though it is probably XTC's most popular album, most people don't know who XTC is. So I wanted to get that out of the way first, because they're probably, through their whole body of work, probably my favorite rock band of all time. And this album, it, if you listen to the album that came out before this, it's almost unrecognizable. And then if you listen to the album that they released after this, it's almost unrecognizable. They completely recreate themselves from album to album. And I think that's what I appreciate most about XTC. Have you ever heard this album? Uh, it, it is truly a masterpiece. Let me know what you thought about this album in the comment section. Is it one of your favorite XTC albums? Is it one of your least favorite? Do you also think that this album is a masterpiece? Let me know in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button, and thank you for watching. Here at